My name is Matthew. Christian here. What's going on, everyone? And this is Racing Through Life. It's a podcast hosted by Open Race. And Open Race is a real time virtual running app looking to connect and motivate runners as well as help event organizers increase revenue, reach a larger audience, and provide a more interactive virtual race. Yeah. And basically, we're trying to brand be more than just a sports app. And we are trying to do Racing Through Life, this podcast. And we also have a blog going on. Um, basically, trying to take a deep dive into the running industry, you know, event organizers, different runners, athletes, Olympians and um, get their life both on and off the track because no one's doing that right now. And today's guest, fantastic. Uh, Sage Watson, just looking at her accomplishments. Uh, Canadian 400 hurdles record holder, 2019 Pan Am champion, 400 First hurdles. Canadian First Canadian podcast. Let's get oh. Canada. <laughs> oh, Canada. It's amazing. Um, yeah, Olympics. She's been the 2016 Olympics training for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Um, incredible athlete. Great story. Let's get her on. Let's welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, what's going on? Not much. How are you guys? Good. Uh, do you? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for. Yeah, first of all, my name's Christian. Matt. Hi, Christian. Hey, Matt. thanks so much for taking the time for the podcast. This means uh, this means the world to us. Yeah, no problem. I always love to like do stuff when it comes to like running and supporting the sport and whatever I can do to help. That's awesome. Well, yeah. So I'll tell you a little bit about racing through life. Um, okay. it's just kind of a podcast that, uh, we started. We also run open races, which is a virtual running app. We want to kind of branch off and uh, build our brand around that. So racing through life is basically a podcast where we go through a runner's life kind of on and off the track and, um, kind of learn more about you, your journey. And, uh, we feel like not a lot of people are kind of diving into the space. So yeah. we want to be uh, one of the first to do it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like Christian said, thanks for coming on. Um, Where are you calling from today? I'm in Tucson, Arizona, so I train at the University of Arizona, um, but I'm from Alberta, Canada. How is Arizona right now, like weather-wise, COVID-wise, how's life there? Um, I mean, COVID-wise, it's a little crazy. I think getting back to stuff as normal as we can, but at the U of A, like, you have to wear a mask on campus. So for my running workouts, I've had to wear a mask. Damn, um, that sucks, eh? Is, it's very hard to do. Yeah. I, yeah, it's very difficult. And personally, I think it's unnecessary if you're not like around anybody to be like wearing a mask outside. But that's a part of being on the staff at the university. You kind of have to go with that. And then to use the facilities, we have to do that right now. So that's what it's been like here. The weather's been super nice, though. Um, like perfect like what was it like 80s I don't know I like this kind of weather for what I do so in the 80s so yeah it's been pretty nice where are you guys from Colorado no just outside of Toronto yeah Canada Canada you went to Canadian yeah yeah no way okay I think I think she's our first Canadian if pretty sure I'm pretty sure our first Canadian guest I'm being honest we've done what 11 12 I think you're a first Canadian guest so I was I was pretty happy I was like we have a Canadian athlete here I was so happy <laughs> yeah I was like it's about time then gosh <laughs> yeah, I know people well, have like said that to us too like, yeah um like oh have you guys had any Canadian guests on they're like nah no. yeah, have <laughs> there's so many Canadians you have to get on here now I've been reaching I've been doing the reaching out I'm finding a lot of American athletes man I'm gonna be honest yeah, like versus Canadian, like the Canadian athletes aren't responding. Uh, the yeah, the rate of response rate, I would feel there's more American athletes I mean, are yeah, responding. That has responded. We've done it with. So yeah, to be, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of Americans are responding and more open, I guess, to it. Okay, well, I can hook you up if you need. Right. That's <laughs> huge. Helps. Hey yeah. man, that's what I love to hear. That's awesome. Canada, so awesome. If you guys need anybody? I can let them know. Perfect. Cool. You escaped the cold. I wish yeah, I was, I was I'm jealous. I know. I was in Canada. I went back in March and then I was there until July. Okay. Um, I came back to Arizona and I went over to Europe for a bit actually for some races. And then I went back to Canada, I did the 14 day quarantine to be with my family for yep. my off season. So I was there for like a little over a month. I came back here um, last month. So and back here, I like left like the week before it snowed in Canada. Yeah, you, I was about to say you escaped literally. Oh yeah, well there's getting bad. Okay, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, so about a week. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> I want. I actually want to live like in Arizona. I think Arizona was like 
I've never been. I've like talked yeah. to him. I've been. Like, I've never been, but like I want to live there. Is it nice? Like, is it beautiful? Arizona, yeah, I really like it here. The summers are brutal though. Like and too hot, or is that what you mean? Or yes, yeah, like you cannot go outside. Like it's too hot. Like you can't enjoy your day outside because it's so hot, and like it gets up to like the forties, like mid forties. Holy cow! So do you come back yeah, like, again for the summer? Hot. Yeah. So well, usually in the summertime, I'm just over in Europe racing. Yeah. So I spend a lot of time there, and sometimes I come back here. But I spent a month here. And it was really hard to train. Like we had to train. You either have to train in the morning or in the evening. And then during the day, like usually you can go outside and like do stuff, but it's just too hot. So you have to wait for the evening to do all your activities. But yeah, other than that, the rest of the year, it's beautiful here. Where did you go try? You said you went to Europe for a couple of races. Where to, whereabouts? Yeah. I went to Hungary and I went to Sweden. Nice. What's your favorite yeah. place? Like throughout your whole, I guess, like career favorite place that you've have seen visited. The like one that stuck out to you. Um, I love Japan. Oh, cool. Japan's got to be up there. They um just like the nicest people ever. Like so respectful. I love their culture. Um, and then I also love Belgium. That's where I usually go for my my training base in mm-hmm. Europe in between races. Uh, and Belgium is just so awesome. Like all the towns, even the cities like Brussels, you just walk and bike everywhere. And there's so many cool like restaurants and bars and like everybody just sits outdoors in the summer. It's a, it's like a really cool place. That's awesome. Yeah. We went to Italy in like high school and like that was my first time in Europe and it was was amazing. I want to go back and like just do that. Yeah. Just like living, they live like outdoors in the summer. I mean, Canada does too, but I feel like they're more like it's, you go to a bar and you just sit there for hours and yeah. just people watch and like hang out, drink, eat food. Like it's so fun. That's that's sick. I want to go to like, if I were to go back to Europe though, I don't think I would go like right back to Italy. Oh, like I would want to do like, like, I would do like Croatia, Greece, Spain. Like yeah. I would go like all like Portugal. I would try to go like all over yeah. Europe to be honest, you know, but then and Italy as well. Yeah. I mean, I've been to Italy a few times. I've been to Rome and Rovereto um which is like up north in the mountains Mm -hmm. and that was pretty cool but Rome was fun too I mean I didn't get to do a lot in Rome like when I travel to races you don't really get to see as much as you'd like I want to go see all these things but at what expense like you're going to go be a tourist for a day you're going to be exhausted by the end of the day so I try to get in like the little things I can get in but for the most part I see the track I see the hotel and I maybe drive by a few things like the Coliseum or something (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't honestly like i have so my background's italian and like i did not like rome at all when we went it's no? like it's, it's cool and all but like i i think i'm more of like a beach beach kind of yeah. same. smaller uh, same i was about to say i know why it's because like there's so much like, like as much as like the history of everything is like cool and all like, i can only do that for so long where like i get bored like is that bad to say like i get bored like i just want to like <laughs> go and play not- like spike ball or beach volleyball on the beach you know yeah like living the life there like you don't have like a purpose there you're just like walking around you're like okay i've gone out and i've seen these these places yeah. like what else is there to do yeah. but yeah definitely i'm all about the beach life like i have to every year i have to go to a beach even like this year i would have loved to go on like my favorite place to go in canada is tofino have you guys been to tofino um on vancouver island no, no i want to be we haven't, we've never been out west, out west yeah you guys that is like one of the coolest places in the world. Like I've been to a lot of places in the world, but like Tofino, Canada is really cool. You can go surfing. Um, the beach life's amazing. Like great food. It's really cool. I want to go out west so bad. Everyone tells we had us. a lot of plans though for this. Yeah. Summer. We did. And then COVID. Yeah. We had a lot of plans to travel. We were going wanting to go. Um, Arizona. Yeah. We were going to go to Arizona like early September. And then that kind of plans got canceled there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but when everything opens every- up again, I think we're going to just travel. Yeah, yeah I think everybody's going to just travel. Like, I think we didn't take it – like, I took it for granted almost. Yeah. Like, just yeah. maybe on a plane because I was always, like – because I live in Arizona. It's not that far from Alberta. Yep. So, if I had to go home one weekend, I'd just hop on the plane, go home for, like, the weekend, come back here. And now I'm, like, oh, like, I have to quarantine for 14 days. Like, yeah. It's just like tough. It's not fun to quarantine. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Alberta, so did you, how did you like, like growing up there? Um, You said you grew up on a cattle ranch. 
yeah uh, like how was life growing up in Alberta and um yeah tell us about that and how'd you get into the kind of running too yeah so my family we own a cattle ranch um it's been in our family for a few generations um my mom and dad really like started like to expand our ranch um Mm -hmm. so they invested like a lot into it um so I grew up around cattle like riding horses like being outdoors all that kind of stuff um and I really my mom was actually you wouldn't think this but my mom was actually a police officer she was in the CSI um in the city we live right outside of and then my dad like owned his own appraisal company but my mom she would run a lot to stay fit Mm -hmm. and so when I younger I was always watching her run and watching her compete in races and stuff and so I always wanted to run and I would ask her to go on runs when I was like too little to go on runs so that kind of like kick-started this passion for running and I started entering like everybody started entering like the elementary school the junior high like school races and I was like huh I'm kind of like good at this I didn't like running like the 400 I hated the 400 I hated the 800. I think I sat down and cried one race, my first 800. My dad, my dad put me in. I think I was like eight years old and I sat down halfway through the race and cried because it hurt too much. Because I was always the kid, like I would give it my all, yeah. like whenever I did something. So I was like, all right, I'm going to like sprint this 800. Um, as an eight year old, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't keep it up. So by the time I was like halfway done, I was totally done. But that kind of started out my love for running. And um, when I was 14, I made 14, I made Team Alberta. Um, Do you guys probably like, have you heard of like the Legion, the Legion track, right? I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, that was like really big um, when I was in like junior high, high school was the Legions. Um, So we would go to like Legion track camp, which track camp still to this day, it might be like, one of the funnest times or the best time of my life was just going to a track camp and like doing track all week, hanging out with your friends all week. And like, we just do fun stuff. And so then from there you'd make team Alberta and then you get to go to Legion nationals. Um, And so I started getting on team Alberta and doing Legion nationals. And then I started winning at nationals and that kind of kickstarted when I was 16, I made the um, youth world team when we went to France and From there, I started getting scholarship offers. Um, So I went on a lot of different visits. And then I ended up going to Florida State University. And then after there, for three years, I transferred to the University of Arizona. Yeah. Well, we just went through the whole childhood here, but I just want to read back. Um, so, okay. Wow. I'm going to go with scholarships. I'm always curious to see like different people's like views on why they chose where they wanted to go. How was yeah. that whole scholarship process for you? Was it overwhelming? Um, what were, I guess like maybe your like top five, which ones you were really interested in? Why? And then why'd you go uh, FSU? Yeah. So I got a lot of just, I think once you're on that, um, like you go to Worlds as like a youth or junior, that yeah. automatically like kind of flags you for a lot of schools. Um, so I was getting recruited to a ton of schools. Like my yeah. parents, this was before I had a cell phone, okay? Like, yeah, this yeah. Was like <laughs> and so my mom was getting like massive amounts of calls and we narrowed it down to, it's so funny, we narrowed it down to ASU, um, so Arizona State University, yep. UCLA. Um, I was talking to Washington And then I went and visited um, Florida State. Nice. Florida State was my last visit. And I honestly just fell in love with the school. Um, They had great school spirit. The campus is beautiful. The track team was a lot of fun. Um, And I spent, you know, three years there. But yeah, the whole recruiting process, I always try to, like, athletes have so many questions about it because it's such a tricky time. But one of my biggest things that athletes don't realize is, these schools don't have to reach out to you. You can also like send them letters. You can send them your race times. You can send them um, your SAT scores. And a lot of them are looking for either like partial scholarships or walk-ons. And so they want their teams to be more like international. So especially like for Canadian athletes, I'm always like, they don't come to you, like go to them, like send the coaches messages, um, talk to them because you never know when a coach might be like, Hey, yeah, we need another like international student. Like they would be perfect yeah. that we're like missing this on our team. I can't remember who it was, but we interviewed, I'm blanking, but she said she remember she had the goal that she wanted to go. I think it was, was maybe not Princeton, Stanford. 
can't remember completely the name. She wanted to go to Stanford so bad. So in like grade 11, she would be emailing the, the grade 10, 9, 10, 11, something there. She was emailing the okay. coach saying, hey, like, I want to come. Like, what do I have to like? And she was talking about like her race times and stuff. And she ended up like, she ended up getting in like her senior year. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think yeah, that's like, like- you just have to put out the effort. And I think that's what yeah. a lot of people realize. Like, you have to be into it as much as they're into it. Unless you're like number one in the country, like they're yeah. not all coming walking at your door like you got to put in the effort if you want them to get you exactly yeah especially from canada going to the u.s yeah. like you don't have that much mm-hmm. of exposure and track and feels that time that thing where like if your time is there you're most likely going to get accepted like it's not yeah it's not like yeah, and then opinion based kind of thing. Too. yeah and sats as well how did that how did those go i, I actually wrote my sats because i was mm-hmm. like I played hockey, like high level hockey, and like I did, I wanted to go D one, but I, I wasn't kind of like there yet. I just wrote them just cause, and it was um, it was like intimidating the way that they did it. Like we went to a yeah. class and it was like sit down like for three four hours straight, and like I've never had that long of a test yet because I was in high school and we've never done like yeah. three hour exams. Yeah, it's a long test. I uh, I did it twice. Okay. Um, the first time I took it, it was kind of like. Just like, all right, I'm going to go see how this is. Mm. And then the next time I was like, I need to bring snacks because that was too <laughs> long. <laughs> I was like packing my bag full of snacks. And like when they said, I think they like gave you a break to eat. Are you, I forget yeah, what it was. Like I would throw out all my snacks and like start eating them just because I'm that way. Like I have to eat while I'm like thinking. Yeah. So I just remember like the next time I was like, okay, I want to do better, but like, I really need to remember my snacks if I'm going to get this. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. Um, wow. That's cool. So I kind of want to bring it back. We kind of like flew through like, we went whole, through, like yeah. yeah, I know I went through well, a lot, but like you guys but, can take what yeah. you want from that. <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of take a little piece. So like, um, what'd you do on like the cattle ranch? Was like there anything like, I'm just curious about that in general, like how, um yeah different yeah, from our lives yeah it's up. so different it's like i just live suburban home like um just yeah how was it growing up in alberta and like kind of um, like seeing yeah like, I guess, like the only difference is like working on the ranch it's a lot of work mm-hmm. um and that's something i'm kind of grateful my parents like instilled with instilled in me was like that work like hard work and like working hard every day not just on days you feel like that because you know you're dealing with animals like they have to be fed they have to be watered every day like you have to always be on top there's no break from the ranch um and that's something like really hard about being in the life of a ranch is like it's every day and also like there's different seasons that come with different things so um one of the things I had to do like young growing up I always had like my chores when I was little so I had like have you guys heard of 4-H it's like a club where um you like raise an animal or you're like a part of something. So 4-H is essentially like a club that builds like life skills. So one of my things that I did, I raised like a 4-H steer. And so that was my project for the year was raising the steer. And then at the end of the year, you sell it at an auction. Um, But it's funny because like (laughs) the whole point is like raising and and selling it for beef. So you have to know like your pet you've raised this whole year like at the end of the year like it's being sold for beef so like it's gonna get slaughtered um so that was one thing as a kid like it was harsh to grow up and learn that but like the time that's like life and it really taught me like where your food comes from and taking care of animals and you know showing them respect so that's one thing I really appreciate growing up but one of the best things we do is like we round up all of our cattle on our horses um, so we do a big like fall roundup each year. I was actually home for that, and it's a lot of fun. We round up like 600 head of cattle. Wow, wow that's pretty yeah. much So how many acres is it on? Quite like so. Lot. Our ranch, um, where we live, we don't have like a ton of land, so we separate. We have a lot of different plots of land, like an hour to 45 minutes away from us, and that's where we like summer our cattle. So we put them out on um, our different pieces of land. And then in the winter time, when they're going to calve, we bring them back to our ranch and then they calve at our ranch. And that, that way we can feed them throughout the winter because like Canadian winters, you have to feed your cattle. Yeah. They can't live off the land. So we feed them um, during the winters. And then in March, we have calving season. So I got to go home for that this year, um, which is really fun. So we have like 300 cows like calving within like a month. Wow. Um, 
which is like total chaos. It's a lot of work and they're calving like at all hours of the night. So you constantly have to be checking on them. And the winters, like you never know in March, like in Canada in March, it's like, oh, it's going to be warm or there's going to be like a snowstorm. So that's a lot of work, making sure they're, you know, healthy and not being born in snowstorms. Wow. That's crazy. That's what I was going to say. That probably gave you, wait. No, no, what are you going to say? You I was going to say that go probably first. gave you like a really good work ethic. Yeah. Because um, like a lot of people just grow up kind of something no one even some people don't even do like chores yeah <laughs> let alone like yeah. raise raise animals and have to like uh, like deal with them and, and know what you're doing in that sense and, and learn about them um so yeah that's really cool another just yeah just a follow-up question to that do you feel that living like living on the ranch was that something that i guess that work ethic and selling that work ethic got you to where you are today and being a professional athlete yeah i definitely do because I think on ran- living on a ranch, there's always going to be like tough times. Yeah. Um, and it's like being able to like work through those tough times, which I think, especially in our like day and age, like people are like, oh, tough time. Like, I'm just not going to deal with it and I can't move yeah. past. We're on a ranch is like an animal's life depends on you, like getting past that, and, like moving on, like a calf dies because it's sick or like it's, you know, it's a stillborn. Like, yeah. You can't get too upset. Like, hey, what are we going to do with this cow? And sometimes, like, this is just a situation. A cow will have twins. And then one of those twins will give to the cow that her calves, like, passed away. So you kind of always have to be, like, not dwelling on the situation, but, like, how can we, like, make this better? And how can, like, we move forward with what we're doing? And learning those life skills really transferred into my track and field life, Um, especially when it comes to, like, downtimes, like, injuries. Yeah. um, maybe like not getting into a race, like, okay, what's next? Like, yeah, that didn't work out, but like, what am I working towards next? And that's really something that living on the ranch really taught me. Wow. That's cool. That's Wait, awesome. Another, another thing just on the, like that, the end part of that kind of just gave me a follow up question. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel that growing, like growing up, how was it in terms of racing? Like, I guess, time management because you're doing so much on the ranch and then with your racing was it ever an ish like whatever problems or how was your time management in that sense luckily my parents were so amazing they were all about like letting me do whatever I wanted in athletics Mm -hmm. so I play like volleyball soccer basketball they're very supportive of like taking me to my games and making it if like they couldn't take me because something was going on the ranch like my grandpa could take me or somebody like that. But one of the biggest things when I was in high school, because I I live in, I live right outside of Medicine Hat, Alberta, which is two and a little bit hours south of Calgary. Mm -hmm. And my coach was actually in Calgary. So every weekend I would drive up to Calgary and train with him and then drive back home for school, like on Monday. Every single weekend. Yeah. Almost every single week, unless there was like a snow, like Canadian things like, or, I could get away with training at home that weekend, but yeah, almost every weekend. So that was one thing. My mom did that for me, like um, grade, grade half of grade ten and eleven, and then in grade twelve they trusted me enough to <laughs> drive that every weekend. So nice. that really made me like independent, I guess, and um, something I was like grateful I was able to do, but. They have always been supportive of like me just like following my dreams and doing what I love and what I'm passionate about. And it kind of paid off because they saw as like if she can like do well on track and field, like you can like then get a scholarship for university. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that was one of the biggest things like that truly I think changed my life in a whole. Like I don't really appreciate it as much as I should sometimes was getting my whole education paid for. You know, um yeah. I know like a lot of Canadian athletes who like stay in Canada, like we just don't have the same system as the NCAA. So yeah. what ends up happening is, you know, they're busting their butts in training and they get partial scholarships for school, but it's not enough. And then you end up graduating with student loans yeah. and then that's just like with you for so long. So that's one thing like my parents wanted to make sure like she's going to get a scholarship. So like, let's let her get good at track. So we don't have to help pay for school or, have to help her get student loans yeah yeah that's awesome um I kind of want to just touch on one thing there you said Cal Calgary is that uh-huh. how you properly say it because we like I say I say Calgary Calgary Calgary, Calgary. 
I say Calgary. Calgary. It's like a split. Like I say, like we're saying it faster. Calgary. Calgary. Yeah, like Calgary. I, I mean, I say so. I'm really stuck in a horrible position because when I'm here in the U.S., I say Canadian things and I get harassed <laughs> by my friends and make fun of. And then when I go to Canada, I say American things and then my family and friends there harass me. I'm like, I'm just like in this middle ground of like nobody can accept me anymore. <laughs> wait, wait, what did they? What did, I want to know both sides here. What do like the Americans get? Or like, what's like one thing they'll nitpick out of you? Um, I like I would say um. What does I say? Hey. A. Not, I don't say A. Like, sometimes I say A. Like, but I realize, you know what we say? We say, hey. Like, you know, hey? Like, right? Like, you know, right? Like yeah. I say, say that all the time. <laughs> I'm <laughs> literally all I say. You know what I mean? Yeah, I say, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I say that you know? all, like, that just flows off. We say, you know, right? Yeah. Like, you see, yeah. I didn't realize I said that. Um, uh Garage. I say garage. It's garage. Um, mm. Pasta. I okay. This is how ridiculous it has been in the state. So I was at a track <laughs> meet once, and I need to order some food for the night. Yeah. So I call this like um, pasta place. And I'm like, yeah. hey, can I get the red sauce and the, like the pasta, the pasta with red sauce? And she's like, yeah. we don't have that here. And I was like. Is like it was something like linguine. So I'm like, is this not linguines or whatever? And she's like, y- yes, we don't have that. I'm like, pasta. Yes, you do. You have pasta. I'm like looking at the menu online. She's like, ma'am, you mean pasta, right? I'm like, wow. She, <laughs> she didn't correct. She didn't even like think like, about I'm like, Italian, and the proper way to say it is pasta. I say pasta. But, like, I know when people are saying if they say pasta, like, pasta, like I understand pasta. what they mean. I wouldn't be like, oh, we don't have it. This girl is about yeah, to give away a customer. That was a moment I was like, wow, okay. Um, so now I say pasta because that really changed changed me as a person. Yeah, you can't even order at a restaurant, apparently. <laughs> yeah, now I go to a restaurant and I'm like, can I get the pasta? They're like, where are you from? I'm like, well, I'm Canadian. I just don't say the A's anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Where are you That's from? Cool. Where are you from? That's um, funny. So how, like... Along those lines, how was the transition from like Alberta, like small town Canadian, yeah. to like big city Florida kind of? Well, like it was mostly, I would say like the cultural difference is like crazy, especially university. Yeah. Um, just like a different lifestyle, I guess. I was like from like small town. I was kind of ready for it because I had traveled a lot with track and field. Yeah. Um, so that really prepared me for it. I was not ready. I guess like the college lifestyle, like I was That's not ready. Parties hard, right? Yeah, like I and I never really partied hard, but the first few weeks I was there, like it's so easy to get into it. And my teammates and I, we were like going out every every chance, <laughs> right? Like, and and they encouraged it at Florida State. So what they did, they had the party, um, like a party bus. So they would pick up at the bars like at 2 a.m. and drive you back to your apartments or dorms. That so is they, like, sick. Free, for free. So that is so it, was cool. almost it was almost too easy. But the thing was there, um, the drinking age is 21. Yeah. So yeah. It was really different. Um, but you could still go in. So here in Arizona, I don't know why we're getting into this, but I just want to like let people know this. So I'm in curious. the Arizona district, you can't get into bars until you're 21. In okay. Florida, you can get into the bars when you're 18, but you don't get wristbanded to drink until you're 21. What? I did, I didn't think that was even possible. Yeah, so, so you, you can, can easily so you can go in. You, yeah, you can probably right. easily get one. Well, right, and that's the thing. That's and they know that they know that people are going to buy you a drink, but they have like bouncers going around checking your wristband, but you like the people would get wristbands from other people, people. but here in Arizona, I, I um. I was 21 by the time I got to Arizona, but it's kind of crazy. So the Arizona lifestyle is house parties, which I think is so much more dangerous than going to like a bar or a yeah. club, especially for like young college kids. And I yeah. think because I, and one thing I totally respect about Canada, and this is something that America, I think, really needs to think about. Like so you're, when you turn like 18 or 19 in Canada, like you can go to a bar. Usually 
you're in high school then or you're just out of high school it's your, your first year yeah. so like the when you get to college or university the the thrill of drinking is kind of like gone like there's no secret to it it's like yeah, yeah you can go to a bar whatever here it's like when you're 18 like Drinking is like some magical thing to these freshmen in college. That's a good point. Look at just the, look, think about it. Look at the frat life in the States compared to Canada. Canada, there's nothing. Like frats in Canada, fraternity sororities are like nothing compared to the States because everyone can just go out to a bar. But if you look at what fraternities and sororities are like in the States, it's looked at as this God, like she just said, this godly thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's, I don't know. And I think that's something that's so great about Canada is like people are like, yeah, you can drink, go to the bar, whatever. Yeah. But here, here in the U S and this is why you have so many alcohol related deaths, you yeah. know, just horrible things happening to young students, especially, I mean, I saw it in the athletics too, like, because they were at home, they weren't drinking. They didn't know how to handle alcohol. They alcohol was some like mysterious thing. All of a sudden you get to college, you're getting offered a drink, even though like you're underage. You don't know how to like treat it. Yeah, you know I mean? you're not in a public setting. You're in like a private house party. So that's where you see like a lot of bad things go on. I feel like when you're in a public setting, like a bar, all right, they're gonna see like this person's, you know, they're too far gone. They need to yeah, go home. Out, yeah. Whereas I think kids, bad stuff happens to kids is when they're at a house party. They're with a bunch of people. You know, they just met. They don't really care about them, so they're gonna let bad stuff happen to them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And that's where like all the fights happen and stuff too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because there's no bouncers to break it up. If like even one person pushes someone, bounces through there immediately. And it's right. Like, it's like they get like right. taken by the neck and they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something like I've always, and I've gotten to so many debates with like teammates and other people here in the US. I'm like, they need to make the drinking age 18 because look, people, our kids can then drink at home. It's not so much a mystery. They go to university and they're like, yeah, you can drink, but they're going to be more focused on school than partying because they've it's already like been through it. Europe's thing. such a, yeah. And Europe's a good, uh, good, a great example. example. Great example. Yeah. Because you go there and like, it's, it's like classier, I guess. Like you don't like people yeah. like, are not, they drink and they can hold it and they're not going and getting like shit faced basically yes, because like, exactly. they've been introduced to it like gradually instead of like at 21, I'm going to go slam. The Done. Basics. Exactly. That's yeah. so relatable. That is, I agree. I also think that goes with like parenting. The yeah. parents that like yeah. let their kid have like, okay, like one drink when they're like, I don't know, like 15 or something. They'll have, like, 15. Not 15. Yeah. Like, like a little glass of wine with like, if they're all at a family yeah. dinner, you know, like they understand alcohol isn't this godly thing that everyone should wait until 21 now i can drink it's like it's like you're waiting for it's like a it's like anything when you like when you hold someone in for so long you want it and more then, like you want them, it more like, exactly like, crazy. exactly, yeah, exactly. Like, like my parents i mean when i was 15 they're offering me a glass of wine they're offering me a drink do you want to try this my mom. Do my mom. Thank you. My mom. yeah i think i think it's totally acceptable to offer your child like a drink hey try this Exactly. Because when they're gonna be like, "Ew, that's gross." I'm not gonna, and then you don't like. You're not like, "Ooh, it's like good." What's for it me. like? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a lot older. My parents were always very open to here. Do you want to try this? And honestly, when I turned 18, I went to the bar in Canada and maybe had like a shot, and I was like, "Well, that wasn't that exciting. I've had alcohol like for years. I've tasted it, and I'm like, I wasn't like into it." Yeah. And so. That's one. And same when I went to university, people were like, do you want a drink? I was like, no, I'm good. They're like, you, you're you not going to take this? I'm like, I've been drinking, like having drinks for a long time. Like, I don't want to get drunk. Like, I don't like the taste of alcohol. Like, I'm pretty good. And so when I was a freshman, that I think really helped me like focus on yeah. track yeah. compared to some of the other freshmen who had never like been around the party, the alcohol scene. They kind of got caught up in that where I was like, no, I've seen that. Like, I don't really care for it. Like, yeah, I'll go out and have a good time. But it's not some, like, special thing to me. How was, do you think that, now just going back on your freshman year, do you think that affected some of your other, maybe, like, freshman teammates? Do you think, like, some people, yeah. like, even not even track, like, other sports, do you think other athletes or freshmen got really misleaded and misguided because of how yeah. FSU's, like, party scene, you'd say? Yeah, I definitely think that. And I think every school has like a party scene, even yeah. if it's not big, like yeah. you could get into 
Yeah. Um, I definitely saw that you could easily get into the party scene because there was something every night of the week, I'm telling you. Like, it was like Whiskey Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, um, like Freebie Friday. like On Fridays, like, yeah. Same. Right, and like the bars were promoting it. So these like young people would come out and when you're being like offered this and people, your teammates or friends are going out and you think it's like something like special and fun, like you're more likely to go out every night. And that's something I was like, oh, I, I was, I thought it was fun to go out with my friends, but I wasn't like, I have to go out every night. Yeah. And once I realized that, like, yes, it's okay to like go out every once in a while and have fun. But like, I knew the effects of drinking would have like on my training. So yeah. I decided not to do that. And I really decided like, yeah, I'll go out and have fun with my friends. No, I don't need to drink or get yeah. drunk. I, so I can like perform better at practice tomorrow. Whereas like my other teammates are coming over, like hung over at training. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I saw, I've seen it. They get through the training session, but your muscles aren't recovering. Your body's not recovering. And so you just go down this slippery slope. And then all of a sudden you're halfway through the year and they're all injured and they're all injured because their bodies aren't recovering. And that's one thing you're young, you're 18. You can do anything. You can get through any workout being hung over, not feeling yeah. good, whatever, but your body's not recovering. And so, so many people would have injuries halfway through the season just because they weren't taking care of their bodies. And that's one thing that, you know, I'm all for, like, go out, have a good time. But, like, yeah. think about, like, the long-term effects. Like, is this going to hurt me or help me on uh, what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And if it's going to, like, hurt your training and hurt, you know, your schooling, then is it really worth it for one night? Yeah, no, I agree. There's a lot. Like, that's a big lesson for, I think, anyone – going mm -hmm. in like a student athlete going and like picking their school and where they want to go and just thinking about when they get there you know where's your mindset at where's your headspace at and understanding like yeah like once in a while like sure like go to the drink maybe like go to the drink go to the bar have fun but like don't like don't kill yourself like just have a couple and then you know go to practice tomorrow so you're, like it's not yeah. worth it in the long run um yeah, how fun. Sorry. Sorry, I've, like, no, no, I've no. talked to a lot of people, like a lot of people at, at universities were like, thanks, like you saying like you can go out, but like you don't have to drink, like really changed like my life. I'm like, but yeah, you don't have to go out and like drink the same as everybody else. You can even go out and like have one drink and be like, you're done. I mean, that's kind of hard for people because once they have one, they're like, oh, another and then another. Yeah. Something I like to do, this is my secret. I'm going to give it to you guys. I want to know. So I... I like to have a drink every once in a while. Yes. Yep. Um, but when I go out in a social situation, that's when you feel like the pressure to drink, especially when you're at a bar. Yeah. So what I like to do is I order a soda water with lime. Okay. And then once you have a soda water with lime, nobody questions whether you're drinking because it looks like it could be vodka soda or whatever. Yeah. That's, that's smart. Because if you're just standing there, not drinking, everybody's like, come on, have a drink. You need a drink. But if yeah. you're holding that, nobody really you questions you. feel also you. less awkward with, like, the drink in your hands. Yes. Exactly. Because, like, yes. you don't know what to do with your hands. Like, no that's idea. Stuff, that's that's yeah. the biggest like, problem. No like, idea. Yeah, drinks you can't let me get you, like, standing there. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like, <laughs> like, like, I'm like, all right, what am I? Do I go on my phone? Nope, I don't want to do that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, so exactly. Fill it with a non-alcoholic drink. That's that smart. Like, oh. Yeah, that's my go-to thing is um, soda water, lime. Like I, I actually enjoy it, so I have no problem drinking that all night. But like then nobody questions you and you don't feel the pressure. And I had to learn that like later on because people were like you're not drinking, they'd really try to pressure you. Once yeah. you have like, soda water and lime in your hand, nobody questions you. No, I, I would think it's yeah, I would think it's a vodka soda. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> awesome. So how was the or what did you study when you went to FSU and, and why did you kind of choose that? Yeah, I um, got into marketing. Um, I got into marketing because I knew I wanted something to do something with business. Um, and I knew like marketing was something I was really interested in, yeah. um, especially like the consumer behavior side of things. And then, you know, when I transferred to the University of Arizona, I like continued on with that. And um, I really started getting into it because I knew I was wanted to be a professional athlete. So how I was going to use marketing to work with sponsorships with you know meet directors with everything like you can use marketing in so many places of your life yeah. uh, so that was something I was really interested in and I graduated um, in 2017 
um, in business marketing. And I still use a lot of it today. I find consumer behavior like super interesting. I mean, that's what the world's kind of running on these days is how to sell, how to sell to people and different kinds of people and different. All about um, knowing your customer, yeah. Yeah, it's really all about knowing. And that same thing comes with life. Like it's all about knowing like who you're talking to, um, your connections, your interactions. I think that's extremely important just to learn in general about life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree. That's something we've been learning too recently. It's like just kind of like Reach building out. up uh, open race and reaching out and to just people. talk to as many people. There's never, if like, even for us, like if there's someone you're even on the fence about, Oh, like, should we reach out? Like just uh, like, don't yeah. like, I think so many people are afraid about like the response sometimes and like the no, mm-hmm. just like, just do it. And then you don't like, yeah. you never know what can come out of just asking someone. They might know someone who exactly. knows someone and like that person owns, <laughs> owns an event. And then you're like, wow, that's great. You know, like, you yeah. never know. Like, who knows who? Yeah, I think that's so important. It's so important to, um, I say kind of like, don't like burn bridges, like with people yeah. too. Um, that's a big thing is, you know, you meet somebody like, and, and be like genuine about it. Like, yeah. you know, what I, mean? I think there's so many people who are on this, like, I, we would do these things in business school, these like social hours. Yeah. And I just remember like I could really tell like the genuine people who are actually like, Hey, like, what's your major? Like, what are you interested in life? And then the people are like, here's my business card, like here's my business card. And <laughs> you're just like LinkedIn. Hey, you on like, LinkedIn? Huh? No, uh, I was talking like, about add me on LinkedIn, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like it, and you know, I remember like the disingenuous people like and I'm not going to contact them. I'm going to remember the person who like actually cared to ask me a question who I was actually like interested in talking to. And we could relate, not just the person like, here's my card. Here's my card. Like, no, that's too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. It's building like genuine relationships too. And like knowing yeah. um, like who you're talking to and kind of like learning from that and like changing yeah. the way you talk based on that. Um, it's a great skill to have. Yeah. So like along, um, I guess your entire like FSU journey, how was your, your running career there? And then why did you yeah. transition to uh, Arizona after? Yes. Yeah, so um, my first year Arizona um, or Arizona at Florida State, obviously like a freshman, I didn't know anything. Yeah. Um, this like little innocent Canadian freshman, like I just kind of got like thrown at the wolves a bit, but I learned quickly. Um and that was something that I like accredit like a lot of my teammates to and like people who I met in university. They're like, look, like if you go to practice, that's great. But like, what are you doing like outside of practice? Mm-hmm. And that's like comes with like nutrition, like all of that little extra stuff. Um, so my first year I was able to make NCAAs in the 400 hurdles. Um, nice. I, I, the first round though at NCAAs, I was out, I didn't make the finals. Um, and I remember like, oh, like, will I ever make the finals? Like, that was so hard to do. Like, can I ever do that? And I actually remember watching the race. Um, and it's so funny because my training partner, who I train with now, she got second place in the finals. And they, like, the girl who won first and second, they actually both broke the NCAA record that year. Whoa. And so I really remember watching that race and, like, thinking, like, will I ever be that good? Like, can I ever be that good? So my second year I went back and I was like, I'm going to kill it this year. Like I'm going to work so hard. I ended up getting a stress fracture in my foot in indoor season in my second metatarsal. Um, and that was honestly like an all time low because at that point track and field had been really like my focal point in life. And school was kind of just like something I did. Yeah. And that kind of taught me like, all right, who are you other than an athlete? Like, what is your purpose other than an athlete? And so I actually started doing, um, like, more things. I actually rushed, like, a business fraternity that year. Nice. Um, like, I just started doing, it like, different things. So I rushed a business fraternity. Um, I ended up that life was not for me. So business fr- fraternities for, like, girls and guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that. I went through that process. And then I was like, this is, like, not what I want to do. It was, it was silly if I could say anything about rushing. It's okay. just silly. Um, it was fun though. Like I got to meet a lot of people, experience a lot of things. And then I ended up joining like, um, like the golden garnet society, like a university society. I 
joined um, the student athlete advisory. So wow. having the injury as much as it sucked, I couldn't race that year. Mm. It really humbled me a ton and it taught me to like do stuff other than racing. Yeah. Yeah. And that summer I actually like, went back to Canada and I got like my first summer job. So that was extremely humbling as well. Like <laughs> having my first job. Um, and then the next year I was like, all right, I need to stay injury free. Like I want to run fast. Like this is the time I'm going to do it. Um, so I went back. I had learned so much by then about everything. And I actually was able to like win ACCs. Um, I went to the NCAA, I made the finals. I got fourth place in the finals. Nice. And that same summer, I actually made Team Canada for the World Championships, which yep. were in Ning. Um, so that was a really cool year. But that same year, actually, right after ACC Championships, my coach got um, let go at Florida State. Oh. So it kind of was this huge downer. And I was like, well, what do I do? Like, do I stay here? Is there going to be a coach? Because I knew the next year was the Olympics. It was 2016. Yep. Like I need a coach who can get me to the Olympics because I really wanted to make my the Olympics. Like that had been a like a life goal of mine, and that had been one of the main reasons why I went to the NCAA was to get better so I could make the Canadian Olympic team. Um, and at that point, like some things had gone on with. As much as I love my team, my team was my family. I felt like the athletic staff there, um, they're really more so focused on points and scoring mm. points at conferences and NCAAs okay. um, so I didn't really feel like as much as cared uh, cared about as like just a student athlete I felt like I was just the point like points yeah. for them and that was one thing I was like okay I want to go, go somewhere where I, like I feel the positive energy from a coach I'm more than just points like I'm a student athlete and so I ended up looking around and coach Harvey my coach I have now he reached out to me um He's like the most amazing guy you'll ever meet. Just like the nicest, like smartest guy. He's super funny too. Um, he reached out and he's no, he knows a ton about hurdles. He coached um, my teammate who made the Olympics in 2012 and she's still a pro 400 hurdler. He's coached like a number of um, Olympians and world-class athletes. So he recruited me. And the funny thing is the reason I came here is he's like, look, you're good, but there's a lot of stuff you need to work on. And I had never really had a coach say, like, you need to work on a lot of stuff. They're like, you're good. We're going to make you, like, the best. He was like, you got a lot of, like, flaws. Like, you really aren't that great at, like, hurdling. And I was like, okay. Like, I think he's going to make me better because he saw all my flaws. And he told me, like, you're not a great hurdler. And at that point, like, I really hadn't worked on hurdle technique. So when I came here, I started working on hurdle technique and, um, in, 20, in 2015. So after – worlds I flew straight here um which was super fun being jet lag for the first week of classes um after being in Beijing for a month yeah. <laughs> trying to get back to classes it was really tough time yeah. um, I was like I was so off like my schedule for breakfast I was going to Panda Express and like getting noodles because like I was used to eating noodles for breakfast like I was just like this the like that wasn't a fresh like a good way to start my um first year here <laughs> just being jet lagged and whatever but I um had a really great year that year um I got like second at Pac-12s and then I made the finals for NCAAs I got third at NCAAs and then nice. awesome. I ended up making the Canadian team for Rio yep. um, for the corner hurdles and the four by four um so then I went to Rio and um that was a really great experience and then my senior year at Arizona I was like you know what this is all or nothing like I need to really step up my game because I need to run fast this year if I want to become a professional athlete because at that point like my times were okay like yes I had made the Olympics but I wasn't pro fast yeah. mm -hmm. and when you're pro fast you have to be running like in the 400 hurdles like 54 53 seconds wow. and so I knew I needed to you know step up my game so I really worked hard that year um, and I was able to win Pac 12s and win NCAAs. And then I ended up signing with my agent after NCAAs. Um, and I went to Worlds and I made my first world final in um, London at World Championships. And then after that, I signed with Nike. And that's kind of where my university career came to like an end. Wow. 
I took that a mess through a lot. I feel like I talked forever. No, but. I'm great. loving it. There's a lot of qu- I have uh, one off the top of my head. Um, let's just take it to the Olympics. So I know you were – was that your junior year you made the Olympics? Yeah. So that's going to be cool, being a student, going to the Olympics. I always like asking, um, how was your overall experience at the Olympics, your favorite part? Um, or, and maybe just like something you just didn't like about the Olympics, like anything about the whole trip? Um, I think like it was just exciting to go to the Olympics. Yeah. Like, I was so excited. Um, one thing I did not realize would happen is I ran my first race and like that was one of the best moments of my life was actually walking out onto the track yep. and seeing the Olympic rings on the track. It's a moment like I'll never forget. And I was in the starting box. And, you know, like in the movies, you can like hear the person's heartbeat. You're like, the, 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 the. yeah, all I heard was my heartbeat. It was so it was like the loudest I've ever heard in my heart. And I was just in the blocks. And I remember um, just hearing that. And I was like, holy crap, like I'm about to run an Olympic race. It was a really surreal moment. But, you know, I finished my race and. Um, the cameraman, for some reason, he like loved me because before my race, I had like winked at the camera, but that was like for my brother. Cause my brother was actually in the stands. Um, and my brother's a lot younger than me. I have to remember that. Like he is 11 years younger than me. So he was just little, when he was mm-hmm. at the Olympics and the cameraman really loved me. Um, and they ended up like focusing on me, like after the race, even though I got second place, like they didn't focus on the girl who won. They focused on me. Within, I think, an hour, I had 25,000 followers on Instagram. Whoa. Yeah. And I was not, like, I was not prepared to get that kind of attention. Um, I was on, I was on, like, like news sites, like, bro Bible, like, that kind of stuff. Like, because they had, like, focused on me, like, yeah. after so all these things came out about me. And as much as I would like to be known for my running, like I really did not want to be known for like kind of what they showed. Okay. Like oh. it pretty much zoomed in on my butt after the race. Oh. So that's kind of like where it went. But at the same time, like I had a lot of followers who were like, hey, we loved your red lipstick. We love what you did. Then I got like a lot of nasty, just yeah. nasty emails, nasty messages, like gifs made of me, like, all these things. And I was not prepared for that going into the Olympics. I did not think that would happen. And I wouldn't think that's that's pretty not like, did the guy get like fired? Like what, like, no, like nothing happened. I mean, they're allowed to like do what they want to do. I mean, a lot of like news articles, like I was one of like the, they put, they did like sexiest athletes in Rio and like I was put on that list. And so that list just like went out everywhere. And it like at the same time I was like all right well I guess this will boost my career but then I was like kind of like sick like I even remember like talking to my dad about it like how awkward is that like my dad's there he's like yeah that's and I remember saying to my dad I was like you know like what do you think about this he's like you didn't do anything you just keep being you you keep doing your thing like I know who you are like I know like what you stand for so like you just keep doing you keep doing your own thing like I'm proud of you. And he's like, look, if they want to talk about you, let them talk. Who cares? It's only going to like help your career and help people get to know Sage Watson, like the runner. And then, you know, by you being you and promoting the things that you're passionate about, like the other stuff will like fade away. Yeah. I feel like that's something my mom's instilled in me at like such a young age was that like, um, just like people in general, the people that want to like put other people down, like judgment. I feel like society nowadays, especially with social media, it's toxic. Like it is really like really bad, especially like TikTok. TikTok is a whole like that is a sickening place because they like no, because I'm serious. Cause they like they like promote like like the most like comment is always like at the top. So it's like people want to like make fun of the TikTok to get the most like comment. So it's sickening right. what social media has I like transitioned to. TikTok tell me I had no friends. Like <laughs> like I was like like, and then you'll reply to them and they'll be like, oh my God, I love you. Yeah. I know. Like, it's kind of, I was like, but how sad is it? Like, this, this people like have to like, feel like they have to say that to people. But yeah. Like social media. And that's one thing I think that almost like we need to 
like I want influencers to be posting more like positive things and yeah. I try to really keep my social media positive and I really try to keep it real with people as much as I can um when I can about my life you know like I don't like sharing all of my life on social media but when I can share like a learning moment for myself or a moment I'm down and like how kind of I recovered from it I'm like gonna yep. share that but I'm always about like posting positivity like not commenting negative things because I think I truly think like when you do that you put that out into the world like karma is going to come back to you in some way for sure yeah, and I think sure. like truly what we put out like either been through social media like that's going to come back at you one day 100 yeah. yeah. percent, absolutely it's always good to put out like positive energy and I, I believe that as well I think yeah like, I mean, yeah yeah I, I I know exactly what you're talking about um so kind of what's your like goals in like plans for like the next few months few years what are you kind of looking to do yeah so I'm training for the Olympics still you know I was yep. training last year for Tokyo so it continues so I'm still yep. training for the Olympics um that's mainly like why I'm back here in Arizona is just to be with my coach um to be I have two great training partners Bobby Grant Georgian Moline they're both professional 400 hurdlers so we have a really cool group we also cool. train with university um so yeah, I'm mainly training for the Olympics this year, but obviously there's a lot of other races yeah. um, I'll be preparing for. But like most people, it's really hard to make plans, like especially this time of yeah. the year, this early. So a lot of people have been asking me, like, when are, when's your next race? What are you doing? I'm like, honestly, like I know as much as you know because yeah. I'm not really planning stuff too much now. But from what I've heard is that the Olympics is going to be a go for sure. Um, nice. whether they have to modify that in some way, yeah. like not have as many fans, but I know it's a go for sure. So that's the main goal is to, you know, train, get ready for Tokyo. And then after Tokyo, the next year, we have world championships actually yeah. in Eugene, Oregon, which is so cool because, um, that's like where I won my NCAA national championship. So I really like love that place. Yeah. So then we have, um, Oregon and then after Oregon we have another world championship year um, I think it's in I can't remember where it's in I think it might be in Hungary or something like that I think it's in Europe um, and then after that the Olympics again yeah, in Paris experience. so it's kind of yeah. like boom, boom boom so the next four years it'll be Olympic training world championship training so it'll be busy but it'll be fun it's good to have like those things to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna ask if you're looking forward to, it, but you answered that question. So Yeah, um, yeah, I'm really, I yeah. I love the race and I love those big meets. Um it's like it's just fun. It's I mean it's what makes track and field what it is. Yeah, that's true. Um what was your initial reaction? Like did you kinda expect it to be postponed? Uh, the Olympic like, yeah, I feel like everyone expected it. What was your initial reaction? Yes, yeah, so <laughs> kind of crazy Canada pulled out our Olympic team first and I actually remember they didn't even like give us a heads up they were going to do this oh. so I remember one night and I'm so happy I didn't have to see it on social media this is like another negative thing on social media yeah the Olympic team thought it was just okay to let the media know before sending an email out to the athletes which I think was not cool at all they didn't like tell you at all no we found out through Twitter I hate that. That's got to be the worst. I feel like <laughs> well, that happens a lot, though, with, like, major, like, I feel like... Yeah, a lot of, like, yeah. I've seen athletes. NHL or, like, other athletes, like, trades and trade news. It's like... They didn't even know. Oh, shit, I'm traded. Well, like, yeah, I got traded. I just found over a tweet. Right. They they find... I mean, I hate that about the athletic world. Like, can you imagine, like, finding out, like, you got fired from your job, like, through a tweet? I don't no. know. But anyway, that's not really compared. But I was one of the people... Um, along with my other, like my Canadian teammate, Justin Knight, we were one of the few Canadian athletes, like that was premature. Canada shouldn't have pulled out right away. They should have let us know. And so I got a lot of hate for saying that. Um, cause people are just like, you think it's okay to put people in danger and all this. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not hear what I'm saying. Oh, I think no. it was premature for Canada to pull out when they didn't even give the, um, the committee time to know and let the athletes know first yeah so, so then you got a lot of backlash 
I got a ton of backlash, but at the same time, people are just interested in my point of view. And so I did like a lot of, I did a crazy amount of interviews. I think I was doing like two or three interviews a day for like over a week um, <laughs> with like TSN, um, CBC, like big time, like radios and all of these things. They just wanted to know like my viewpoint because it was different from other people's. Um, but I'm happy I spoke my mind. Like that's what I believed in at the moment. I think the Canadian Olympic Committee should have sent out an email you know, tomorrow we will be announcing to the media that we're planning on pulling out of the Olympic Games, just to let you know. <laughs> so you don't have to read it on Twitter. Yeah. And um, that's where I kind of stood. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. That's yeah, my that's like a company. It's like a company saying, uh, we just let go. No, actually, maybe not. Uh, we just let go of like a few employees. Like, oh, I just got fired off like off Twitter. Maybe not yeah, the same thing. I agree. Kinda, kind of sort of okay. kind of like calling out like i don't know news like i don't know you just feel like you should have been told like that was something yeah that's close. something you tell someone like first before you announce it to the to the world so did canada pull out before other countries did yeah they were the first yeah. ones to do it right yeah yeah so i guess so, like, that's another fall. thing like, yeah, yeah the yeah, olympic that's... eventually fall other countries started pulling out yeah but i mean like you sh- yeah, it, it makes no sense. I agree with you. It makes no sense to even pull out early because, like, like other than making a statement like, oh, like, we stand for this kind of thing. Seriously. Like, let the Olympic Committee decide, like, is it, is if it's, it's going if it's on. on or not. Like, what if yeah. it, what it, like, what if you, yeah, what if they pull out and they're like, oh, no, it's actually going on. We're just going to, That's what they said. you guys they, already pulled out. They didn't care. That's what kind of was the thing. Like, we're putting our athlete safety first. So, if, even if it does go on, we don't want our athlete safety um our health yeah but and i'm sure they would have the olympic in, committee would have put their safety like your guys safety right. in check as well like well they were dealing there. the olympic committee they're dealing with like millions of dollars of sponsorships they just so made how many millions of dollars of gear the venues like they're dealing with a ton of moving pieces so Tons. i really think the olympic committee was trying to get like everything in place before they said yeah let's postpone it yeah. to make sure they could afford to postpone it. Um, but I think I I get why Canada pulled out. I, t- I totally get it. Yeah. I don't think they should have done it in that way. I agree. I think that's, like, pretty immature, to be honest. <laughs> I think it's immature. Like, I well, – Trudeau don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get mad at Trudeau. Like, what's, what, what's my opinion going to do? It's going to do nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, well – yeah, that was a, a really great talk. Fantastic. Your time. We kind of yeah, ended off here. We have like a speed round that we do at okay. the end of our podcast. We have like some questions. We'll fire off at you and you give us the first answer that comes to the top of your head. The last okay. one's a little bit longer and you can take your time. And then, um, yeah, we'll kind of end it off after there. Okay. All right. So okay. first one is uh, favorite food. Uh, steak. Good. How do you like your steak? Medium rare. Nice. Good answer. <laughs> I watched one of your videos on Insta. <laughs> what? I watched one of your Oh, in the medium rare. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Favorite cheat meal? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't really, I just think about it as eating. Like, I don't or really snack. think. Favorite about, snack? Um, I guess, like, I love Reese's Pieces. Um, Reese's Pieces Blizzard. That's really good. Okay. Um, Dairy Queen? Yeah, Dairy Queen. Nice. Okay. I like right. that. Biggest fear. Biggest fear, I guess, would be losing a loved one. Yeah, let's go on. Celebrity crush. I honestly, like, people, I've never had a celebrity crush. Even when you were, like, going out, like, like, no. Like, and people are like, how have you never had, like, I, when I see somebody in real life, I'm like, oh, okay. They're, like, good looking. I like them. But I've never seen somebody, like, even on TV, like, or anything, I've been like, oh, I really like them. Like, even, I remember in junior high, the Jonas Brothers were huge. And I was like, oh, nah. What about and Justin like, Bieber? Oh, are you kidding me? No. Nobody. Wow. I know that Justin you- Bieber. No. Like, I honestly don't crush on people like I see as, like, celebrities. It's the okay. weirdest okay. thing. That's a, that's a, I don't think we'll hear that one again. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. Favorite uh, clothing brand? Nike. That was an easy one. Oh, yeah. That was a bit little about to say. Favorite music artist? 
Oh my goodness. I can't. I really can't. Do you have okay. a few? Um, like genre. Let's do genre. I think I might be better, maybe. Um, even that one is hard. Oh, I'm so sorry. Like, no, I it's live, okay. I, Let's get I, it. Music lover. Like, I love any. I love anything from like old time songs to like rap and hip, like hip hop. Um, okay. okay. One thing I'm like, this might be like, I like it, like dance music mixed with hip hop. Okay. Kind of like a like a marshmallow song. That's like. Yeah, like something like that. Okay. 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 I understand that's it. That's music. dance music. Yeah, you're right. You're right. No, you're right. Uh, right. Biggest. It's my turn. No, it's your no, turn. It's, it's your turn. Biggest <laughs> running myth. <laughs> biggest running myth? Yeah. yeah. Like when um, someone says something, you're like, no, that's not true. About like running. Like it's one of those things where like someone says something, you're like, that's not true. Um, I guess like the more miles you put on, like the better you're going to get. Like mileage is like everything. Okay. I guess yeah. like, more, you know, overworking. Like yeah. you need to be hard all the time i'm like that's kind of my thing i'm like no it's like work smarter not harder yeah, yeah i like that one um guilty pleasure um oh the bachelor and bachelorette like i did not watch that stuff for years i thought it was ridiculous last year i started watching it i'm like this is entertaining what do you think like, about this season? I've heard, like, I've just seen stuff. I haven't, I don't watch it, I but I've know. just seen it everywhere. Like, the girl's Claire, right? Yeah, Claire, she's the oldest bachelorette yeah. they've ever had. And she's just, she's in love with this one guy. And she, like, ignores all the other guys. But I'm like, that's real life, though. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, you I'm want one like, person, like, I'm not going to talk to another one. doesn't make for a show, though. That's why I'm like, that's kind of more, this is, like, more of a real life situation where she like falls in love with one guy and like doesn't really care about the rest so i understand it but i'm not mad i mean it's the guys are ridiculous it's like not real life like it's not real life that's why it's like my guilty pleasure because people like that's so fake i'm like i know it's fake like i completely understand but But it's entertaining but i still want to watch it like i don't know why (laughs) i like that it's a good answer um if you could go if you could travel to one place in the world where would it be dang um bali nice that's a good answer um and the last one so this one you can take like if you need a little bit of time just because we want a reason as to what like we want a reason to um if you could have dinner with one person dead or alive who would it be and why Oh, that's good. Um, I would probably have to say um, my grandma, who passed away like right before I was born. She actually like passed away in her 40s um, from lung cancer. And the reason I say this, because I live kind of in a small city. And everybody who like knew her in my city still to this day, like comes up to me and says, your grandma was such like an amazing person. And like, I loved her so much. And they actually like tear up still to this day. And that was almost like 30 years ago and wow wow, like if I could meet anybody and my dad always tells me my grandpa always tells me like your grandma like would love you and so I always wish I could have met her because she was actually really big into like lipstick and makeup like nobody really in my family likes that but like I guess she was so that's something kind of cool that I know like she would like about me even though I never got to meet her um Maybe so yeah, like, subconsciously oh, you get that from her. Yeah, I know. So just having people like tell me like how many years later how amazing of a person she was like makes me want to meet. Wish I could have dinner or meet her so badly. It's a great answer. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> I I, I would have said Justin Bieber. I, 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 I say that. <laughs> no, I'm just no. That's comic relief. That's good. <laughs> Viewers like that. No, I'm just it's comic. Great story. I literally said it was beautiful. I would have gone Justin Bieber just because like I'm a Justin Bieber fan. Anyways, whatever. Uh, okay. I was so upset when I said I didn't have a slot. You're like, not even Justin Bieber. <laughs> I did say he lost Justin Bieber. You're like, he has like a passion for him. Like, no, no, okay. No, no, no. It's not like a passion. I'm just saying. He's like, he's been through it. Like, Justin Bieber. It's, like, it's not a passion. It's not a passion, man. It's not a passion. <laughs> He listens to Baby on the weekend. No, I don't. I've never done that. I was a lie. Straight up, you just lied on, on a podcast. That was your first line of podcast. Actually, his music now is pretty like the his last song like lonely and the video to that was like i was like okay he's getting like deep here like i feel like his 
artistry is going to start coming out now that he's well, I'm saying, man, yeah. I feel like he's I got so he much going on. Like that, like pop phase that's like just like make songs yeah. that people I mean, like, like want to play the video. Tell them what to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. I tell you what to do and say and be. And now, like, I feel like, well, I don't know anything about him. Maybe I should have dinner with him. But um, <laughs> I feel like he's probably at a point in his life right now where he's like, all right. Because I think, I think I'm the same age as him. 20. 20 How old is Bieber? Is Bieber 24? No, he is. Because Post Malone is 24 and he's two years. He's two years older than Post Malone. I saw that on yeah. Twitter once. So he's 26. Justin Bieber's 26. Might be 26. He might be 27. He might be. Yeah. I, he's either like my age or like a year older. I remember yeah. that. So I kind of always, I know that's like weird when people were like hating on him, like what he's doing. I was like, yeah. I've done good stuff too. Like, it's just the age you're at. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I feel like he was introduced to that. so much at like 10, like 12 years old. Yeah. Like Usher at 11. <laughs> she was hanging out with Usher at 11. Like, what was going yeah. on? Like, after the concert? Like, I don't know. What 11 year old? Like, like what you were doing at 11, like what you could like compensate at that age. <laughs> That's why I would have dinner with him. Be like, dude, like I can only imagine. Like think about after the concert with him and Usher. Usher's going back. I don't know what they're doing in back. And then and then Justin's like 11. Like, you know, like what is yeah, going on right having, now? Having drinks together. They're just, what are they doing? I would love to chat with man. That'd be a cool I know thing. you would, man. Dude. Every podcast is say it. <laughs> well, we ask everyone that question. I always say I would do, I would like to meet Justin Bieber. That would be mine. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, do you have any exactly. like anything you want to shout out at all? Um, no, just you know, to any like buddy who's watching, who supports me or listening, like thank you. I really appreciate all the support I've gotten, especially like from Canadians, and like that's what keeps me going. Is you know, knowing that like. I'm helping to motivate other young athletes as well as that's like my main reason why I do what I do. So just thank you to everyone for the support. And um, I'm going to be going for a medal in Tokyo. Love it. That was we'll awesome. Four, four by 400 and 400 meter hurdles. Yes. We'll be there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a, yeah, have a great day. Guys. Thank you so much. Sage. It was a pleasure. Hey, and let me, let me know if you need to get in touch with anybody. We'll Love send you. a, me- we will send a message. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good one. Bye.